President Xi Jinping wrote a letter to Adam Foster, president of the Helen Foster Snow Foundation, urging the US organization to promote friendship between China and the United States. In the 1930s, Edgar and Helen Foster Snow, two journalists from the United States, made the Communist Party of China known to the world through their articles and books about the party and the Chinese Revolution. They are seen as a bridge connecting the two nations. Today we're talking to Adam Foster, a great nephew of Helen Foster Snow, to learn more. Why did you write a letter to President Xi Jinping and how did you feel when you read his reply? You know, I felt very pleased to see that people in both China and the U.S. are recognizing Helen's contributions to U.S.-China relations. I'm grateful that the leaders of our countries you know, understand the importance of people-to-people -people relationships and building bridges and working together. Our work has also received a tremendous amount of support from people across the United States and China. So to me, this, is, this really is international friendship in action. And you asked, why did we write this letter? Well, as a foundation, we looked at the accomplishments we've done over the last four years. We decided it was time to emphasize the spirit of international friendship, which Helen Foster still embodied. And I think this spirit was really echoed by President Xi's letter. But also our, our letter from the foundation and from the Foster family to President Xi was to thank the Chinese people for the way in which they've honored Helen's work during this past year, also in previous years. Year 2021 was the 90th anniversary of Helen's arrival in China. There has been increased interest in her life story, both in the U.S. and China. And we thought it would be in the best interest of both countries to reach out, uh, as she did so many years ago, in a spirit of friendship. Her work on the Gung Ho movement in the 1930s really exemplified that spirit. And as part of that work, you know, Helen encouraged her friend Rui Alley to establish the Bailey School, which helped people uh, underprivileged youth to obtain an education. And then she traveled throughout Southeast Asia to raise funds for that important effort to be successful. Later, I learned that Rui Ali invited President Xi's father to serve as an honorary principal of the Bailey School in Shandong, uh, Gansu province. So since Helen and Rui worked together to develop the Bailey School and with Helen and President Xi's family, you know, both spending significant time in the same areas of Shanxi province, uh, so the spirit of the spirit of international friendship, which Helen began so long ago, continues today. What contributions have been made by the Helen Foster Snow Foundation to develop relations between China and the U.S. over the years? When Helen arrived in China in 1931. Since then, the Foster family has been involved in, in U.S.-China relations at the people-to-people -people level uh, over a few generations. We really focus on three areas as a foundation and that is education and culture, business, and subnational relations. And so we have many different events and activities that we do in those areas. Uh, we work with Northwest University in Xi'an to promote this uh, scholarship, which, uh, which they do a, a competition called the Helen Foster Snow Translation Award. Uh, we're looking to make that into a world-class translation competition. For the years you've been working for the foundation, what stands out to you as the most influentially significant change in China? I think that China raising people out of poverty, the way that, that China did this might be different than how other countries have done it or would do it, but it is quite an achievement. In my experience in China and, and hearing about the experiences of others long before me, everyone talks about how you know, modern the cities uh, have become and the living conditions have improved. Uh, but I'll tell you the one thing that seems to be a constant, uh, whether you visited China 20 years ago or two years ago, and which I think is significant with all the changes that have happened, is that the Chinese people uh, can be very tr you know, warm and welcoming uh, to foreigners. China Daily established the Edgar Snow Newsroom, aiming to present a true multidimensional and panoramic view of China by better telling the story of the country and the Communist Party of China to the world. I'm a member of that newsroom. Have you got any advice for us on how to stay true to our aim? I think Helen is a great example. You know, getting to know people individually, I think is the key to understanding people collectively as a whole. Being able to connect on a personal level, I think is critical 
to understanding and, and telling the true story of China. When she died in 1997, Helen received a special memorial service at the Great Hall of the People. Uh, and uh, all of her works, the, the 11,000 photographs, 60 books and manuscripts, they're currently housed at the library at Brigham Young University. I think that following that example, coming here, we, we'd love to you know, invite anyone who wants to learn more about her life uh, and learn more about U.S.-China relations and, and how to improve those relations. Uh, you know, this is, this is a great place to start. Well, I hope one day I can visit. Uh... I do want to say that uh, you know, the Foster family and the foundation are very excited about, about what's ahead. You know, now is the time to create bridges. Now is the time to create dialogue. And uh, I think it's critical that we continue these efforts and that we you know, embody those values that our ancestors started. You know, U.S.-China relations have been around for a long time. And I think it's important that we preserve those. Indeed, indeed. Adam Foster, thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. It's a pleasure.